Good afternoon. Welcome to the Thursday afternoon Bible study. I apologize for our late start today. I was working until 3, so we could not start the Bible study by that time. Again, welcome to the Thursday afternoon Bible study. I'm your host and Bible teacher, Bob Bear. And we are in Lesson 3, Part 6, E, Jacob's, or no, uh, Isaac's Boys, Part 2. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, give me a second here. I just want to get chat up on the phone, right? <laughs> Lesson 3, Part 6E, Isaac's Boys 2. <laughs> uh, that is a long title for a lesson. Hopefully, it doesn't mean we'll end up with a lesson just as long. <clears throat> anyway. All right. Let's get that stuff squared away, huh? All right. Let's go ahead and start with prayer. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless this time that we have together. I pray, God, for your touch. I pray for clarity and focus and wisdom. Enlighten our hearts and minds with your word. Dispel fear, darkness, doubt, and anxiety. We pray, God, for <clears throat> your peace and healing to be here. And protect this time that we have together to share your word. We pray that you bless Twitch for giving us this opportunity to teach your word. And we pray, God, for truth, truth to be revealed. In Jesus' name, I, uh, amen. <clears throat> All right, we got chat, we got this, we got that, we got the other. So I didn't have time to change my um, alerts. So if we get follows or anything, it's going to be Star Trek. Don't be startled, surprised, or offended, please. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> oh, what's this stuff? I got a bunch of stuff in here. Oh. Oh my. I know this getting. None of that belongs in here. But that's fine. We are in the dispensation of promise. And um, what that basically is the order or uh, the manner in which uh, God dealt with man there were other dispensations like law and and um, conscience and you know like that but during this time of the patriarchs it's called the dispensation of promise and that has to do with the promise of God's favor the promise of God sending a Messiah through the descendants of Abraham. I'm very thirsty. 
<laughs> ah, Jesus said, Come to me, all ye that thirst. He told us to come to him and he would give us living water. We believe on him, as the scriptures say, out of our belly should flow rivers of living water. Well, the times of refreshing are here. Let me tell you what. <clears throat> God has poured out the Holy Spirit. He says it's for all of us. All right. So, let's, uh, oh, let's move along here. Last, why is it so small? I, I made it wide. It got small again. That's weird. Did it get, did it, what's going on? That's weird. Whoa. Stuff's not behaving the way I want it to. There we go. All right, looks a little better. Uh, so <clears throat> we had a thing. Here's uh, Esau, and this is Jacob. Esau was a uh, daddy's favorite. Jacob was mama's favorite. God had told Rebecca, Isaac's wife, that the younger was gonna that the older was gonna serve the younger. That's an odd thing, isn't it? I think it is. Usually it's the other way around, isn't it? But God has something that we don't. God has foreknowledge. That's far superior to foresight. Foresight is is like being able to guess really good. You can look at a sequence of events and guess the next thing or the next couple things that are going to happen as a result. Like playing a chess game. But God has foreknowledge. He knows how the game is going to end before the game even starts. And more than that, he knows where each piece will be throughout the game. That's the difference. Anyways. So, uh... Last week, we looked at how um, Esau had gone out hunting, came back home, and hadn't caught anything. He didn't, he didn't get a deer. He didn't, didn't get a mountain goat. Didn't get a turkey or a goose. Couldn't even find a chicken. Nothing. Couldn't find any game. And he came home and his brother was cooking lentils. He's like, give me give me some of that porridge. Give me some of that lentil. I want, I want that stew. I am dying of hunger. He's out hunting one day. One day. Just one day. And he thinks he's starving to death. And Jacob, who's got this big, big pot of lentils, is like, ah, oh, you can eat as much as you want if you trade me your birthright. Basically, the birthright was the financial uh inheritance so usually when 
um, in in the old days, well, just before or right after a man would die, he'd divide up his inheritance or divide up his property and money assets and and give it to his children. He would give the eldest a double portion. So if he had two sons, like Esau and Jacob, he would give Esau two parts and Jacob one part. If he had three sons, he would give two parts to the oldest Two parts to the oldest, whoops, two parts to the oldest and one part to the other two children. So if he had three sons, his, his assets would be quartered and the oldest would get half and then the other 50% would divide, be divided. All right, that, that did a couple things. It ensured that uh, the somebody in the family stayed on the land and that somebody in the family would care for the parents when they got older. So it's kind of like a retirement plan, right? But here Jacob, he's ambitious. His brother is carnal, but he's ambitious. And he wants he wants it all. And his brother Esau is so carnal, so shallow. He doesn't care he doesn't he not only doesn't care about the, the future, uh, he doesn't uh, care about his family's assets. I don't know. It's, it's, it always struck me as being an odd thing that he would treat it so contemptibly. And so that's how the birthright was exchanged from Esau to Jacob. And that's in Genesis 24, verse 29. That's, that's where we left off last week. This week, we're going to look on a little further. In Genesis 25, Something very interesting happened. Isaac had been having problems with a Philistine king named Abimelech. All right. They've had some conflict. But then one day, Abimelech comes up to Isaac and when Isaac asks him, why have you come to me since you hate me and sent me away from you? And he says, uh, we certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we want to make a non-aggression pact with you. You don't attack us and we won't attack you. They saw that Isaac was blessed by his God, so much so that they started to fear Isaac and his God. So Isaac made them a feast, they ate and drank, and they rose early in the morning and swore an oath one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. 
And in that place, he dug a new well, and he called it Beersheba, and Beersheba still exists today. Let's see if we can find it here. Yeah. Let's see. They know where it is. Let's see some pictures of it. <laughs> Neat, huh? That's where a that's that's where Isaac dug his well. Where he raised his boys, Jacob and Esau. They were probably young men by now, but whatever. It's a metropolitan center now. Pretty cool. Here's the old ruins. I find it fascinating. Um, what, what I find fascinating is that these places exist. These people were real. And this is this is where they lived. And right here this is where the Philistines lived. Ashkelon, Ashdod, Gaza, Gath. It's not all just stories. These were real people, real events, who serve a real God. Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah at the bottom of the Salt Sea or the Dead Sea. There's Beersheba. These are the travels of the, uh, the patriarchs here, I think. So we're talking about Isaac and Esau now. Let's go back to Isaac, I mean uh, Esau and Jacob. Now it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. that he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son? And he answered, Here I am. Then he said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me the savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Wow. Isaac's a good man. He's a righteous man. He believes and trusts God. And he knows that God has blessed him. And, and the nations and the kings around him know that God has blessed him. And he wants to pass that blessing on to his sons before he dies. That's a good thing. And take note. Isaac does not see so good anymore. I can relate to that. <laughs> I'm not ready to kick off at any time. But who knows? Maybe he had cataracts or something. And they say that the, the straightest route 
to a man's heart is through his stomach. A, a, a lot of a lot of women have found this to be true, and uh, it was certainly true of Esau, and it seems it seems true of Isaac as well. So he sends out his boy to go hunt. Savory is not sweet. Savory is more like salty. So he likes the the spicy stuff. The salted meats, you know, like uh, like sardines on your pizza. I I never got into that, but you put a little salt in, you know, a beef stew, some garlic and stuff like that. I I love that stuff. I love that stuff. A lot of people do. But here, Rebecca, his wife, heard heard Isaac tell this to Esau. And when Esau left, she went to her son Jacob, who was her favorite. And she said, hey, I heard your father speak to Esau, saying, go get me that food that you cook so good, that I like so much, so I can bless you. Before I die. And she said to her boy Jacob. Who is her favorite. Go kill a goat. And I'm going to cook it. Just the way your dad likes. And then. You are going to give the food to your father. And you're going to pretend to be Esau. And he's like. Ah. Uh, no way, no way, look, look, my arms are smooth. I don't got no hair on my arms. And and if dad figures out it's me, he's going to curse me instead of blessing me. And his mother says, you do what I tell you to. And if he curses you, it's going to be on me. I still think that's kind of a crazy thing. I I don't know about you, but I would have been a lot more reluctant to do what Mama said. Um, it is not advisable for parents to pit, play favorites and then pit their children against each other. And it is less advisable for parents to try to pull one over each other. That causes a lot of problems and a lot of strife in the family. And it is no different here. You're going to see it is no different here. If you have kids, don't show favoritism. And never, never, ever say... Why can't you be like your brother? Why can't you be like your sister? Because you just did this. You just pit them against each other. And that tells the child that you like their sibling more than them. That's devastating to a kid. But he went and he did what his mother told him to. We're down around verse 15. She cooked it. Then she took some of Esau's clothes. And she took the skins from the goats. And wrapped it around his hands and arms. And put some on the back of his neck. Esau must have been incredibly hairy. Goat skins? Goat skins. This guy must have been a walking carpet. Then she 
gave the food and the bread that she fixed. Gave it to Jacob and said, go in there. Go to your father. I'm guessing the two boys sounded and looked quite a bit alike, except for the one being hairy and the other not so hairy. And it must have been rather dark in the tent. Because Jacob goes in there and uh, he says, my father. And Isaac says, Who, who's there? Oh, I'm, I'm Esau, my older brother. <laughs> no, <laughs> he said, I'm Esau, your firstborn. I did as you told me. Here, eat, eat the food I made you so you can bless me. Isaac said to his son, how is it that you found it so quickly? Now he starts getting on dangerous ground. Because he says, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Careful, Jacob. Careful. Just because your mom lied doesn't mean that you should lie. But he told one lie followed by another lie. And Isaac said to Jacob, please, come here so I can feel you. He must have been getting suspicious. Because he said, I want to see if you're really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near his father, and he felt him. Can you imagine he grabbed his arm. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands, the hands of Esau, he probably had bad arthritis too. From not to feel that it was just skins wrapped to the man's arms. He says, you sound like Jacob, but you feel like Esau. Come here. And then he asks, are you really Esau? He says, I am. This is the man that pagan kings are afraid of. Isaac says, bring it near to me. I will eat of my son's game so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near him and he ate. And he brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Came near and kissed him. And he smelled his clothing. He must have still been suspicious. But he smelled the clothing. And he smelled the smell of Esau. Smelled like Esau. And here the blessing begins. Isaac says, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren. And let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you. And blessed be those who bless you you. What a powerful blessing. This is 
on par with prophecy. This is a prophetic blessing. It is important that you, as a parent, bless your children. Don't curse them. Bless them. Lift them up. Don't push them down. Don't cut them down. Build them up. Bless them. Encourage them. Give them confidence. Share your wisdom with them. Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Hey, Dad, I got your food. Come and eat. What? Who are you? Uh, I'm your son, Esau. Uh-oh. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly. It said, who? Who? Where's the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came. And I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. Even Isaac recognized the power of his prayer and the blessing he spoke over his child. And this is part of the danger of showing favor between your children. Because he liked Esau more, he gave a powerful blessing. And maybe he had no intention of blessing Jacob at all. But here, Esau heard what his dad said and cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me! Me also! He said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. See, you remember last week? We looked it up. We looked up what Jacob and Esau meant. Esau meant red and hairy, right? Red? Like Edom and Jacob meant supplanter, heel grabber, trickster, trickster, swindler, deceiver. And Isaac, Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master and all his brethren. I have given to him as servants with grain and wine. I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me also. And he wept. Isaac 
did not plan on blessing all his children, but only one. And so it backfired on Isaac. Don't make Isaac's mistake. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. This blessing too was prophetic. Uh, the descendants of Esau became the nation of Edom and uh, it came to pass uh, later that the nation of Edom which had become a trade empire did serve the Israelites for a time but when the Israelites the descendants of Jacob turned to wickedness and had forsaken serving God then they broke away from Israel until their own wickedness led to their destruction so Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father blessed him Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So he said, I won't do it while my old man is alive. But when dad dies, I'm going to kill Jacob. That's what Esau said in his heart. And he must have been talking to himself out loud because the words of Esau her older son were told to Rebecca someone must have heard him talking to himself I'm gonna kill him as soon as dad dies I'm gonna kill him because then Rebecca calls Jacob and says uh, your brother is comforting himself by telling himself he's gonna kill you Now listen to me again here and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. That's where that's where Rebecca came from. Remember the the faithful and wise servant, Abraham's faithful and wise servant? That's where he went. He went to Haran and found Rebecca and brought her back to be Isaac's wife. She says, you go to your uncle's house and you stay with him a few days until your brother cools off and he's not angry anymore. You know, and it would seem that Esau wasn't one to really hold a grudge. Moms are usually pretty good judges of their children's character. They, they know their kids pretty well. But she knew in the short term, it would be really bad news for Jacob to stick around. And because she showed favoritism to Jacob and, and plotted and tricked her husband and had Jacob trick her husband, she played 
her sons against each other. What a terrible thing for parents to do. Playing favorites and playing their children against each other. Because now, for the safety of one, she had to send the other away. And she, and she was afraid that if Isaac did die soon, that she'd end up losing one of her sons as well. So she told her husband Isaac, she said, I, I don't like the wives that Esau married. She said, I'm tired of these daughters of Heth. She said, if Jacob takes a wife of one of these girls from around here, she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to feel like, I'm going to feel like dirt. She'll, she she basically saying when she says what good will my life be to me she said basically that I if Jacob marries one of these girls from around here I'm gonna feel like a failure as a parent so that's how she explains to Isaac why she's sending Jacob away Acting like she doesn't know what's going on. So, <clears throat> Jacob, Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. And he said to him, you're not to take one of these girls around here for a wife. Go to Padan, Aram, the house of Bethul, your mother's father. Go to your grandpa's house. All right. Get a wife from there. You know, you can stay with your uncle. Hello, Sir Galahard. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Don't worry. He says, and I, I'm, uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm thinking Isaac, because Isaac's not a fool. He's, he's made mistakes in his life, but he's not a fool. And he's starting to realize that he's partly to blame for the mess that's that's happened in his family just now. And instead of holding a grudge against his son, it seems to me that Isaac has forgiven Jacob for tricking him. Okay, enjoy your work. And he says to Jacob, as Jacob's getting ready to leave, he says, May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram, Padan Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, the mother 
of Jacob and Esau. And um, where Jacob is sent away to go get a bride, he's sent to a place where where they got family, where their their customs and manners are more similar and like theirs. Esau. Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take himself away from there. And that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and gone to Padan Aram. Also, Esau saw the daughters of Canaan did not please his father, Isaac. So Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nabajah, to be his bride, in addition to the wives he had. I find this very interesting. It would seem that Esau did not know what his parents expected of him as far as choosing a mate. Because he had been, oh, she looks nice, I'll marry her. No. No, we haven't all been there. <laughs> Apparently, he didn't know. Yeah, some of us. He didn't know that his mom didn't like his wives or girlfriends. Or whatever. And he overhears, he sees or hears Jacob being told, uh, I don't want you marrying these women around here. You marry from over here. He's like, oh. So, I mean, kudos to Esau. I meant in a wider sense. I, yeah, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. But look, he decides to take a wife from a, a relative on the other side of the family. Instead of from one of the uh, uh, pagan tribes in the neighborhood. So you can see that at least to some degree Esau is, is trying to gain approval of his parents or even his mother. See, because here, up here, uh, it was Rebecca who said, send him, send him to my, uh, my brother's house to go get a wife. Send him, send him back to my hometown to get a wife. I don't like the women from around here. And so Esau took a wife from um, his father's side of the family. Ishmael would be Isaac's brother. Isaac was Abraham's second son. So I don't know if he's trying to endear himself 
to his parents or if he's trying to snub his mom by going but I think he's still trying to please his parents even though yeah it's it's got nothing to do with luck <laughs> you either make a good choice or you made a bad choice <laughs> I, I don't see how it has anything to do with luck I really don't lucky is um, flipping a coin and guessing right three times in a row that's lucky picking a mate no that's 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 that has to do with choice that's like difference between ch choosing a red car or a blue car <laughs> do I want the red bicycle or the blue bicycle is that luck isn't that the lottery come on So anyway, do I want the green house or do I want the purple house? Hmm. So Jacob leaves home the excuse was for him to go find a wife but the truth was, his mom didn't want his older brother to kill him as soon as her husband passed away. Because first, Jacob had tricked him out of his birthright, and now he had tricked him out of his blessing. So there was nothing left for Esau to inherit. He tricked him out of his inheritance. It's luck who you meet and who you start liking from there. Really? Really? Was it luck that you you decided to ask your wife out on a date? Or was it luck when you asked her to marry you? Or was that a choice that you made? To ask her out for a date or was it a choice that you asked her to marry you <laughs> hey you can you can blame uh, your biochemical response to being in her presence but you yes what do you mean you had no choice you had no choice oh no you had a choice you had a choice and so did she showed so did she you both had a choice and I'm gonna choose to end the Bible study here but my point, Sir Galahard, is regardless of the choices that you made in, in uh, getting a mate, is your relationship with your children. From what we learned here, one, don't play favorites with your children. And two, bless them. Bless all your children. And pray for your children. And three, never curse your children. And four, never pit your children against each other. And five, never pit your children against the other parent. Don't play the other, don't play your children against your spouse you will you will 
you will cause all kinds of heartache in your family if you do that. And if you have done it, you need to repent, ask God for wisdom, and ask God to help you make it right with your family and ask your child or children and or your spouse for forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, fine. You should tell my wife. You tell your wife. You tell her of all the people in the world that it was not luck that you two got married, that it was your choice, and that you chose to love her more than anyone else in the world, and that if you had the chance to do it again, you would make the same choice all over again. And you can tell me how the second honeymoon goes, minus all the mushy details. And when you, when you tell her that, maybe a card and some flowers would be good too. <laughs> For the kids, if you need to ask their forgiveness, well, uh, maybe you could do that over a pizza or an ice cream. Anyways, ask God for wisdom. Yep, that's right. That's right. Biblical, sound biblical uh, relationship advice here. Amen. Amen. All right, if you got prayer requests, because we started late, we're ending a little late. Uh, if you have prayer requests, put them in to the chat. Yep, it's that time. The Bible study is coming to a close. If you have prayer requests, write them in the chat. Lord Jesus, thank you for another good day of studying your word and sharing uh, your your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for the uh, dysfunctional family example in uh, in Genesis. Pray God that you help us learn from the mistakes of others that we saw in the Bible. Not just their good examples, but from their mistakes that we could learn to avoid making some of those mistakes ourselves. God bless Sir Galahard and his family. Bless, bless him and his wife with uh, many years of uh, blissful romance. Hallelujah. Uh, bless our lurkers. We pray, God, that your word would encourage and edify them and strengthen them in their faith. Uh, bless, bless Burns. We pray, God, that you heal him and close that wound from the inside out. Bless and heal Willie and his family. And uh, let's see. Who else needs a blessing? Lord, we pray that you uh, bless Sir Galahard. Help him at work. We pray, God, that you give him the strength and the um, the resolve and uh, the wisdom and how to deal with uh, problems and issues as they come up. Give him peace of mind and uh, help him to uh, be discerning and uh, making good choices and uh, how to deal with difficult situations in the best way possible. Give him peace. 
give him peace. And uh, let's see what else. Bless and keep everyone who came here, who lurked, who visited, who listened. Keep them safe. We pray God for their healing and their encouragement. Amen. God bless and keep you all. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, I'll see about um, streaming later. I don't know when. Could be an hour. Could be three hours from now. Whatever. Ooh, look at all those hands. All right. Bye. <laughs> oh, let's, let's pray for Lucky, too. Lord Jesus, be with Lucky today. Help him, Lord. Keep him safe. He's out of town. Bless him and his family. Help him on the job. Help him uh, find a new job. If he's found a new job, help him do well on that new job. Uh, in Jesus name, Amen. Ooh, I almost, I almost forgot. He wasn't, he wasn't able to be here with us today. He had to go out of town, and, uh, but he wanted to be here. So, anywho, all right. We'll see you later. Have a good night.